Alrighty, so welcome back to the food truck series, how to build your food truck with me, Frank Baltieres. And this is the explanation that I'm gonna give on these two types of wires. They're very, very similar. The difference is I'm gonna show you right now. One's called 14.3 and one's called 14.2. The thickness of the wire is exactly the same. Typically, 14 amp wire, sorry, 14 uh, gauge wire carries 15 amps. That's the general rule of thumb. 12 gauge wire carries 20 amps of power. And what we're gonna use here to feed the lights that we're gonna be on the opposite side of here, there's a light gonna be here and there's another light that's gonna be there. And then the rope lights, we don't want them to turn on at the same time. So what we're gonna do is right here, the ability of having a 14.3 cable is that you get an extra wire. You guys can see it has a black wire, a white wire, a ground wire, and a red wire. And we're gonna use these as switch legs. And a switch leg goes to your switch, and also a power goes to your switch from another source. But this is gonna be our switch legs. We're gonna use the black for the lights, the red for the tape lights. You can do vice versa, it doesn't really matter. And I'm doing that because if that wasn't the case, I would have to do one of two things. Either run two of these wires, which is a 14-2, as you can see, it only has one black wire, one white wire, and the ground. And I would have, if I wanted to control them separately, I would have to run two wires outside, bang, bang, to be able to, to turn on two different things at the same time, two different devices or two different uh, light sources being like these right here. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone, and that's why we're gonna use 14-3, because we can use this one time and wire up two different things and then bring it all the way back here. So from there, the 14.3 is gonna get ran and routed to the switches here. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna be sticking to the outside theme of the trailer because we've had some really, really nice days. And what we're gonna work on now is this exterior lights right here. I can't find these anymore. I found these at Menards uh, a while back and then I found the second set and after that, They've been out of stock for a long time. So I'm gonna go with this option right here. Uh, the good thing about this is it has an integrated LED. I really like how they looked when they had them on display at Home Depot. And also piggybacking off that, because it comes together are these LED tape lights, or uh, they're not rope lights, they're called tape lights that have a little control on them that you can switch colors, make them blink, whatever you want, dance around. So that's gonna be the next part of this video series on how to build your food truck, installing the outside LED fixtures. I have one right there, and I have a second one right there, and uh, that's gonna be the best way to segue from finishing the concession window to doing this. So we're gonna be taking the same concept. We're gonna put one right on there on the left side of the window. We're gonna put one right here on the right side of the window, and these are the two lamps that I bought, and this is a rope lighting that I have been using. I've used it three times already on this um on these food trucks and these food trailers around the concession window they work really really nice this outdoor use so that's really cool and they stick on with uh, it's a tape literally so you peel it off and it glues on but i'm going to show you guys how we installed it pretty easy process so we're going to start a little bit on the electrical because obviously you have to run the wires to this or being the switch leg because that's what turns these babies on right here so that's the two lights the rope light and that's where they're going to go right there all right, so let's open these up. These are outdoor rated, so it has the wet location because obviously you're gonna have it outside, so it's gonna be exposed to all the elements if you're in the snow, with the snow, with the rain. And like I said, these are LEDs, so that's really cool because the ones that I have are with light bulbs. But I like the light bulbs because I put the old Edison style of bulbs, so it gives it a nice like antique look, and that's just the glass in there. So pretty simple, straightforward light. It was actually pretty, pretty light. The light is light. <laughs> that's funny. But uh, that's what we're installing. They were about, I would say, I think $50 a piece. And the rope light was about $60. Just to give you guys an, uh, an idea of what the price range is. Obviously, there's more inexpensive uh, fixtures. But just know this. Once you install these, you typically won't change them. So pick something really nice. Even if you have to spend a little bit more, it makes all the difference. So right here, when you're installing the lights on the left and on the right right there, there's no like real 
right or wrong place on where to put them. I just try to put them aesthetically as nicely as I can. If you see the bracket back here, we're actually gonna mount this just a little bit different to be more secure. I'm gonna show you guys what I do here, but I'm gonna put it right to the top of the concession window. It's gonna be the top of my light right there. And then we have all this play right here that we're able to use with the wires. So it doesn't, you can't really get it wrong unless you like get it on this side of the light, which would just be very, very hard to do. So what I did is I measured five inches from the bottom and then I measured four and three quarter right there. And then just the middle of the fixture is gonna be right there. So we're gonna drill inside to the trailer and see where it ends up. We did the same thing on the left side um, and that's gonna give us our hole where we can run our wires and then I'm gonna show you how we run the wires to make these turn on at the same time. Alrighty, so there's the line on the left side. There's the trailer, so you guys don't think that I'm drilling into something that's not the trailer. And I'm just gonna drill just a little pilot hole. I always like to drill a little pilot hole just in case we mess it up, you never know. And that should go to the other side of the trailer. And it'll give us a real good idea of where we make, almost like with the step bit, we'll make a little bit bigger hole so that way we fit our wire through there. Uh, and that's gonna feed our rope light or the tape light and the two outside lights. And you're not gonna see any wires except for that little rope wire that we're gonna show you right now. Alrighty, so I come inside the trailer and there it is. That's the little pilot hole. It's gonna work out really nice because we're gonna put some outlets right here. And that we can use as almost like a junction box. In the electrical world, a junction box is a box where you connect wires and you can run into other spots and connect something that you want. So that's our hole, works out perfect. The next part of what I did is I drilled a hole. It doesn't have to go all the way to the other side of the plywood, if you guys can see. The drill bit, it was, the first one was just literally a pilot hole so I could see where it was coming out, make sure it wasn't inside a stud, but no, uh, you don't have to drill this way in. And I'm gonna show you guys why I'm gonna run the Romex now, which is this. This right here is Romex wire. You guys can see right there. There's a 14.3 and a 14.2. And I'm gonna tell you the difference right now why I'm using both of them because they do serve a different purpose. S similar purpose, but just a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more different. But there's one hole right there. And then here's hole number two as well. You can see I didn't go all the way through the plywood because I'm gonna fish uh, my Romex down through that cavity. We call it a wall cavity and that's gonna feed the lights being the rope light and the lights outside off one switch. And a plug because these are plug-ins. So what I did, what I do, I had a like a reminder almost is I run that cable, the plug stays out here kind of hanging out, and I make this a switch outlet. That's exactly what I do. I make this right here is gonna be four outlets, or we call it a quad, which is a duplex twice, right? So one, two, three, four. So four outlets, and one of them, one side is gonna be a switched outlet, which is gonna run to that side over there where all the switches are gonna be, which that contr will control the outside light. So it's switch outlet because these rope lights run on a switch and then we're gonna run that to the outside just so we're clear because I remembered as I was running this over here, I was like, ah, there we go. And all these terms that I'm using, that I'm using like switched outlets, uh, switch leg and things like that, as we like go through the next couple videos, they'll all make sense how it all um, goes together when we wire up the switches, run the power and everything like that. Just know that on this one particularly, we're running it as switch legs. You can do a lot more uh, with a cable that's like a 14.3 than a 14.2. Just know that all the terminology, don't get confused yet. If you don't understand, the next couple of videos will really, really help you understand what it all means to have a switch outlet, switch outlet, a switch leg, a hot, a neutral, a ground, all that fun stuff. So be patient because it will all make sense. So this rope light, this is how it looks, this tape light. It literally has a 3M tape right there. And it's a big coil, 24 feet long. And this is a plug that I was mentioning right now um, that's gonna run to the outside. Ah, if I can take it out right here. So this right here unhooks from there, this little dial kind of twists off. 
So I'm gonna run uh, this from the outside in. Ah, there it is. And this is how we're gonna get that plug to be on that switch outlet. And this goes outside and all this just gets bundled up inside the wall cavity as extra. So on here, I'm going to use my 14 two gauge wire, 14 two wire, 14 gauge, and two conductors is what the two means on here. Uh, so I'm going to fish it from the outside to the inside. I did a little notch right here, and this is going to control the outside lights. We want to make sure we label every Romex wire that we bring in. That way, when we're tying everything together later, we don't get mixed up on what is what. So we're going to feed it down through here. Even like a little curve at the end there. And you kind of fish it down. I've been fishing wire for a long time. I've been doing electrical work since high school, to be honest. So you're gonna just fish it down until you see it down in that cavity, as you see right here. And then you just kind of take it out. And we're gonna label this outside light. And if you guys remember on the 14-3 wire, we're gonna use one of these as a, um, actually we might have to run one more wire over there. You know why? Because we need power, because we're gonna have outlets here, so we're gonna need power. These are just gonna be our switch legs. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to run one more wire all the way across right here, just for our power to feed our outlets and things like that. Uh, because you wanna have an outlet here, just in case you need to plug in like your cash register, uh, your phone or anything like that so one of the one of the wires on here is going to be for the outside light the other one's going to be for the rope light or like the cutter lights that we're going to have on here which is going to be powered from this plug right here so i just wanted to show you how we fish the wire literally down through here so now i'm going to cut it on the other side and i'm going to label this outside light and then one of these being maybe the black we're going to connect it to this wire right here So a trick that I've used on all my installs on my outside lights is, well, this is the wire that's gonna be, this is a 14-2. That's as much protection as I can give that wire so it won't uh, get skinned on that aluminum. Is So this is where on the light, the fixture has their bracket. That's where it goes right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill all the way across to the other side of the trailer, just like this. And the reason we do that is because we're gonna, if I put screws right here on the skin, the light is not gonna get held up because there's nothing back here besides just literally this little sheet of aluminum. So what I have to do is take a screw and put it all the way across to the other side with the nut and a bolt. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. But for now, we just know that we just have to drill all the way across to the other side. And then we're gonna pick something up at Home Depot. So what I did here, if you can see the two screws right there, they're, they are 1032 inch screws, inch and a half inch long. I had originally got two inches, but it was a little bit too long. So I got inch and a half and I drilled a little, a little bit around the screw head. That way they sit a little bit more flush since we're gonna have the stainless steel kind of right on top of that. And the reason I did it was because there is no stud here. So if you were to come over here and just screw it, let's say you were just to take two screws and screw it to the skin of the trailer, then this eventually would fall just because there's literally nothing anchoring that light to the trailer. So now that we went all the way through, we have something to grab onto. So that is held on by the plywood, almost like a sandwich effect. And that's what I did there. So two 1032 screws, inch and a half long, with a lock washer and a nut right there. So that's my suggestion on how you can securely fasten the lights outside. And now since I have the wire up here, I can I can show you all how to install this light. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our utility knife, we're gonna skin the wire back, like so. Make sure you don't go too hard into the into the insulation of the wire of the outside because you can cut the, the insulation of the wire and you don't wanna do that because then it'll short out. So you're gonna take a nice easy skin. 
you pull this back as such like that. And then you just do that. So on this one, we used 14-2 wire. 14-2 means that it's just gonna have a hot. On this one, it's being a switch leg and a neutral. And then the ground right here. So we're gonna take our wire strippers right here. We're gonna skin this back. In this bag and the copper or the ground you don't have to because it's already bare so that's how you have that we're gonna take our lamp now which is right here it comes with wire nuts already included so you don't have to worry about that all right we're gonna take our white wire and we're gonna connect it to the white wire of the wire that comes from inside there's no power here so we don't have to worry about anything. You want to make sure you twist it. And I always give it like a little yank. That way you know it actually grabbed on. Because what we're going to do after, we're going to silicone the outside of the light. That way it, no water comes in here. So we're just going to install this. And then we're going to silicone it once we're all done. There's that part right there. We're going to do the same thing with the bare wire, which is your ground. Every light might be a little bit different if you don't buy these exact ones, but it's all the, simil the same similar concept. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And we're going to install it right there. Let me get the two screws that go with that light, which are right here. And then this light will be mounted on this side. Hopefully it's easy enough to understand. On the lights, it's a little bit more simple just because you don't have any other wire besides being the switch light. And that screw with the light had like a little insulator on there. that side let's go to the other side right here hopefully my lamp's not in the way sorry my remember how i showed you guys that i love this little tool it gets into really really tight spaces i guess this will be one of them right here just like that look at that nice fit Let's make sure it's level. We're gonna take just a little level right here, make sure that our light is perfect. There it is right there. So that light right there is all set and done. Let's give it another tight. Now we're just going to put the glass on top of it and then it'll be a done deal with this light. As you can see, that's how the light's going to look at the end. And then we're just going to silicone right there. Make sure that's a nice watertight, waterproof um, area where no water can get into the wires and things like that. So there you go. All right, I guess sometimes you got to read the instructions and that glass that goes right here behind that light. Uh, in front of the light, I guess you have to take that off first and then put the glass in there as such. And then you put that back in. Oh my gosh, I should have read the instructions. Now I got to put it back on again. But uh, just make sure that you put the glass in. If you get the specific fixture, make sure you put the glass in before you hang the light. And I got to hang it one more time, but it's okay. Alrighty, now that I found out that you actually have to have the glass before you install the light, I got the glass in there. Actually, it looks much, much nicer like that too. Uh, now we're gonna reconnect our wires. I had already skinned them previously. And okay, so the light on, I guess, towards the back wall, towards the back door, is gonna be a little bit different in uh, the installation. And the reason is, is because we're running the rope light 
through that uh, through that light fixture being this one right here so we have to do something a little bit I guess you could say tricky but it still works because we're gonna uh, silicone everything make sure everything's watertight as well but right here in the corner right in the edge we're gonna have to take our drill bit and drill um, a hole or not like the whole thing it has to be like a half hole or something like that I'll, I'll show you guys right now what I mean and the reason is is that wire from the rope light or the tape light is gonna come out through here and then it's go it's gonna wrap around the entire window the reason I'm doing it is because it looks really clean and you're nobody's really gonna notice that wire which makes it even better being the rope light that's gonna go around the window to give it like a little bit of extra color and if you're working at night it's even better because it gives the window like a little pop so to speak so right here we're gonna drill a hole and then we're gonna put it up top and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean Romex wire right here is gonna get connected to our light this one right here is our rope light so it has like a little piece of tape so we're gonna tape that down right there and we're gonna bring this up as such up here to be able to uh, run that line so you, if you can see that that little black cable that's why we did that notch that way the light fixture fits perfectly just like that and then we're going to take the rest of this rope light and then we're going to just whoop, run all around actually i'm going to probably do that right now i'm going to take this rope light and just take it all around the entire light that way it's uh it's ready to rock and roll and i can close this window so let me do that real quick and all right so we're going to do something a little bit on the advanced side of the electrical uh, do I recommend you do this? Not really, but uh, since I don't have my electrical panel set up in here yet, I can't turn on the generator or plug anything in. I have, I have to test the lights outside to make sure that they work before I silicone around it because I don't want to take them off after I silicone because once I do that, it's pretty much all said and done. So I'm going to take an extension cord right here um, and I'm going to plug in the lights. Like I said... This is just a temporary thing because I just want to make sure that they work. So I'm going to plug them in. And technically, let me see. If I plugged it in right, it should work. So let me go see. All right, so I'm going to take it and show you guys if they work or not. Where's the light at? Can you guys see it? There it is. All right. There it is. So that light works. It's going to be connected right. So I want to make sure I silicone that now. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Just wanted to give it a test. And what we're going to start doing now is running the electrical because we're going to put the stainless steel walls now and the electrical panel and the can lights and all that fun stuff. So what I did uh, just a couple seconds ago is I ran a power cable. This is just going to be for power. I labeled it right there, power. It's the 14.2. So I ran it right here where my switches are going to be. Ran it up top. Ran it across the trailer. And I'm going to bring it right down here where my outlets are going to be. And that's going to serve as my home run. I'll explain to you what a home run is. I just want to make sure I share that with you on all the little details that I'm doing. So I ran a wire from this side of the window where my outlets are going to be. And I ran it all the way up top just like the other one. And I brought it down just so you follow along. And I'm going to explain to you what a home run is once I run it. Okay, so I'm going to test out the rope lights, and this is the part that gets hooked up. This is going to be on a switched outlet, so when you flick a switch, instead of turning on a light, like in your house, or like a fan, or your dining room light, it's going to turn on the outlet, and that's why they call it a switch outlet. I'm just going to plug this in right here, somehow. Let me get this real quick. There it is. It fits snug right in there, and then this little twisty cap goes on there. That's what makes it... Uh, I guess you can say waterproof because it says it's for outdoor use as well. And we're gonna plug this right into the extension cord 
and this rope light comes with its own control that's how you change the colors and everything like that so that comes in the box so we're going to take this off and then we're going to use that to power on the rope lights so there it is right there that's the control and you just pull this off and it should give you power so let's turn on the lights see if they work oh there they are look at that Ooh, that looks nice let's turn them off let's turn them on uh, let's change it to red change it to green oh mode is it mode there's red there's green blue purple and then light blue again so there it is and then you can uh, make it where it goes like different speeds it switches different colors and uh, you know I never use this one it's a little bit uh, <laughs> not not good for my uh, where I want my customers seeing but uh, hey if that's your fancy then there you go but that's an option there switch it to red I usually always keep it in green that's my favorite color to use uh, being my rolling burritos food truck that I use so there you go that's how you install your that's how you install your rope lights and then these two right here work as well and we're ready to rock and roll on the exterior lights the concession windows up boom done okay so just to recap how I did the wiring from that side over there let me show you guys so you guys can see where I labeled it this goes straight to the outside light so it's just a 14 2 cable this one where it says outside light light and rope is a 14 3 cable and that one goes up all the way over the concession trailer sorry the concession window and down to here that's going to have two switch legs being one for the outside light and one for um the rope lights for the switch outlet the other one's a power because we need a power that comes from the breaker panel and that one we have to grab from over here as well which we labeled it right here power that's a 14 2 cable because it's just gonna have a colored wire and a neutral being a hot that's gonna be a home run don't forget we're gonna cover what a home run is probably on the next video but that's what it is that's the recap of the electrical